Hey there, I'm Ryan and welcome to today's landscape tutorial. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description. And if you'd like help with the drawing process, I will have the traceable up over on Patreon, where you can also get access to the eBooks, bonus lessons, art critiques. There's a lot up there to help aid you in your creative and artistic endeavors. But with that, let's jump into today's tutorial and get creative together. We'll begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush and I will dip the bottom third of it into a little bit of water then proceed to wipe off the excess. That way we get to keep our paint wet for a longer period of time, helps with blending. That said, I'm going to grab some titanium white, move that to a clean spot on our palette, grab the smallest hint of ultramarine blue with the corner of my brush, interject that, and we'll also grab the smallest hint of a Mars black. That'll just desaturate the blue that we add a little bit and we can continue adding until we have a subtle grayish blue for the top of our sky. Now I'm going to avoid my larger clouds for the most part but I'm not too worried about painting over them as we can always just redraw it. Now we're slowly going to continue moving this down the canvas I'm applying it in horizontal strokes for the most part. And as we get lower, we're going to interject more titanium white, then a hint of our first pink pigment. This one is Pale Rose Blush by Windsor and Newton. And it'll give the bottom portion of our sky some nice warmth will also start to create a cohesive pigment for all of the pinks that we're going to interject a little bit later in the painting process. We will have to paint over the tops of our trees just a little bit and we'll do a soft blend upwards really not applying much pressure with the brush. The more pressure you add the more of a streaky aesthetic your render. So we're just being delicate. Now as you can see I've redrawn in our clouds using a little bit of colored Conte but now we're actually going to paint them and for a mix I have some pale violet which will move right here on our palette. We'll need to desaturate it just a little bit so we'll add titanium white and Mars black taking the excess off we do need to be careful with how much we add. We'll make it cohesive with the rest of the piece with a hint of our ultramarine blue. And this would be a great pigment to begin with. So I'll start applying that right in the center of our larger cloud. And I'm not going near the edges at this point. We're just building a nice thick middle base layer and we can use the sharper corners of the brush to work in the more detailed areas as well. But we are going to switch our brush when we want to get it a bit softer along the edges. Now, preferably while the mix is still wet, we are going to grab a filbert brush, which has nice soft rounded edges. And this is fantastic for blending out the tops of our cloud as well as the bottoms though it still has a nice sharp top to it so we can bounce back and forth between rendering very intentional line work and semi-opaque transitions again kind of perfect for the subject of clouds that said because our main mix here is still wet, I can just blend a lot of it out. And here you can see a good close up of how that blending process looks when using that portion of the brush. Love the filberts, they just make it really easy. That said, we don't want this color to start looking flat, so we're going to interject some of this into it as well. It'll connect nicely with the 
light towards the bottom and as you can see creates a good transition it looks like that brightness it's working its way up around the cloud starting to create some extra dimension and we can softly blend that up nice and easy it'll be much more noticeable how well it fits as we work downwards and we can also place it a little bit on the tops of our clouds here we we'll use it exclusively as a cloud these ones are a bit farther back as a general rule of thumb when the clouds closer it's much larger it's much taller and then as you move farther and farther away they a become smaller because of perspective but b they become much more horizontal rather than vertical so we're just jumping around getting our first layer in we will do a lot to build these out but we do need to build the base now as we continue we are going to want to interject more and more of our brighter hues and there goes the sun <laughs> One of those days where it's really bright and then it's a little bit dark. You can really see with the shadow of my hand. These days are great to paint because you can see what a painting is going to look like on cloudy days and bright days. But it can also be a little interesting with the painting process. That said, we're going to take this now brighter variant of what we were just working with. We'll continue the edges that are going to receive the most light, so typically the bottom portions. We'll make sure that it's a soft blend up as well as a soft blend down. So we're not applying much pressure and we're not using the top of this brush for the most part, we're using the corner of it. There we go. Grab a little bit of water, make sure that it's nice and damp. That way it's semi-transparent and it helps us with that blend. It's important we do this for even the smaller clouds. You can wrap that light around them. Because it's a smaller canvas, we don't have that much room for detail, but we can still definitely imply quite a bit of depth through this process. Let's go a little bit brighter. You can see we're just continuously adding more, working our way away from the purple. Now we can continue to add a depth to the cloud by building out some darker portions as well as some thicker areas. And we'll do that by remixing the purple that we have, which of course had a hint of ultramarine blue, Mars black, and titanium white. I always like to keep a little bit of my past mixes on the palette just so that we have it as a good reference. And then we'll go slightly darker. So more Mars black, maybe a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. And because we have the extra ultramarine blue, I do want to desaturate it. So we're adding titanium white despite the fact that it brightens the pigment. So now I'm going to actually place mine towards the middle and slight top portion of this larger cloud, just like that. Then I'm going to brighten it and make it a bit more of our purple. I'll apply that along the edges. And we'll do a soft blend into the pre-existing portions of the cloud. This is going to make this portion, this area, look thicker. Light's having a harder time working through it. And it makes the edges of the cloud look more thin. So we're just making it more round, more built out. There we 
we go. Would like to know that I am changing the lighting a little bit from the reference photo. In the reference photo, it's much more above the clouds, so the light source. Here I'm having it slightly below, just making for a minorly more dramatic sky. But it does mean that the bottom of our clouds are a lot more highlighted than what they are in the photo. And I just like that look for this piece. Now, as it dries, I'm seeing that I actually do want it to be a bit more pink than blue. So we'll just continuously work over this pigment until we get it exactly how we want it. And I think that's a big part of painting. Not being afraid to continuously try things, change things. I think when a lot of us begin, we're apprehensive to make big changes, fearful that it'll end up being a little bit worse than where it is, right? So we settle. But realistically, through doing these extra layers, we learn so much, we become better painters, and it's so much more than just making this portion better. I mean, we want to make it as good as it can be, right? But it's also just building your confidence, getting you more practiced with the pigments, and again, just making you a stronger artist. So don't be hesitant or fearful about jumping back into subjects if you're not entirely happy with them. It's okay to spend the time until you get it just right. That's what we're aiming to do here. Slowly interjecting, slowly making changes. So from there, we're going to add sap green or green gold to our palette. I'll grab some of it, move it to a nice clean spot, grab Mars black because we want to darken it, and a little bit of titanium white because of course we're also looking to desaturate. Though I want a much darker base layer. So yet again with Mars black, slowly interjecting more because it's very quick and easy to make it extremely dark. I think that this is actually quite nice. And we're going to start working in some of the tree line in the background. I'm going to use the top of my filbert brush to create some really nice detail. I'm rotating it back and forth, leaving little openings you can barely see them from a distance, but I do think they matter. And then we'll make the application much more thick as we get towards the bottom. And we do that simply by applying more pressure with our brush. That will leave more of a brush stroke, but that actually looks really nice as pattern in the distance. And we're going to want to make sure that we do a couple of layers just because it's thin. If you find that you're having difficulty really building it up, just let it dry, come back, and it'll be great from there. That said, while we let that dry, because we want to add additional trees and details on top of it, we're actually going to move to this section. And for that, we're going to go with an even darker variant of our green. We'll use slightly less titanium white, because we want to it to have a greater contrast but also be more saturated. As you move closer to you in paintings, typically you get more saturation, you get more contrast, you get more of the innate coloring. And so we want to bring that forward as it's an easy way to instill extra depth. Here, just working the tops of our trees, you can see I'm doing it through tiny little taps, and I'll actually get you a lot closer for this part of the technique. So here, as noted, lots of taps, applying very minimal amounts of pressure with my brush, because if I apply pressure, I'll show you, 
you get a much larger, less delicate marking, right? So when we have a lot of clean pigment on our palette, when we have new pigment on our brush, it's typically best to do the more detail-oriented, softer applications first because it's the easiest opportunity to do so. The less paint you have, the harder it gets. Here, starting to run out of paint. So as you can see, it's getting a little bit harder to render those sharper markings, but it is semi-transparent now, which I like as you move into the distance because it makes it look like the light is working its way through our trees here, wrapping its way around the top. So this natural progression from left to right is really what we're looking for. There we go. And then we can use the excess paint and just work that over here. Getting a couple notifications on my phone, apologies about that. It's one of those things where I want to put it away when I paint, but I also use it for my reference photos. And here, as you move down, it starts to look quite nice. Let's make the very bottom even darker though, because the top is going to be receiving extra light, and the farther down we get, the less light there is. The foliage will cast shadows on itself. So we just work in a little bit of extra Mars black towards the bottom. And we can apply more pressure down here. I'm also okay with the brush strokes showing through. And I'm even intentionally creating some just because it adds a really nice texture and detail. Then I'll clean up the bottom and just make it a bit more linear. Okay, so now that we have our base layer dried and applied, we're going to build a slightly brighter variant of that. Now my mix has dried, so I am starting from the beginning, but we essentially want something that's still fairly dark and fairly saturated. So titanium white is the least used pigment in this new mix, and we'll give this one a try. You can see that in relation to the last, it is quite a bit brighter. And I'm going to start by applying this towards the top. And I'm doing a bit of a speckled effect where we're doing taps that A, cover the protruding portions at the top, but B moves down minorly and creates a brighter look here as well, which is great because when we have the darker portions beside the lighter portions, it looks like there are inset areas and areas that stick out, which creates depth. These trees are far away, so we can't articulate too, too much depth, but we can do some through this technique. Yet again, I'll get you a bit closer. So as you can see, it's not dramatic at all, even up close, and that's how we want it. I'm rotating my brush in the air as we move from side to side, as we move down, and as we move down, we're progressively going to do less because that bottom portion isn't getting that same amount of light and should be a bit darker. That said, we're going to add trees on top of this and we're going to need to let it dry. So before we finish up, we're going to do one last bit of highlight. Not much brighter than what we used, but slightly. And the more variance you build in here, the more depth you add, but it is a bit farther away. 
and we don't want to overcomplicate the background because we don't want to take attention away from our primary subjects in the foreground, right? So it's all about balance and recognizing that even when you can add detail, even when you can add contrast, in a lot of scenarios it's actually advantageous to not do so. So we'll just do a little bit and we'll let this dry. Now we're just continuing to move this upwards and as you can see the higher up we move it, the brighter it looks. It's actually a lot brighter here than it is on the palette because it's semi-transparent and the pigment that we have in the sky is so much brighter than what we have down here. So we can build a real variance and the light really looks like it's working its way over the trees. That said, we don't want too, too much. So I think these will be my final taps, and we'll let drying occur. So our pigments are now dry to the touch, and we're going to begin building our cherry trees with the darker portion of them, the background. So I'm back to our more purple pigment, hint of Mars black, hint of ultramarine blue, and finally, titanium white. We want it to be a bit more saturated than that. So I'll go back and forth between the purple and the blue until I have a nice dark mixture. We really want to avoid an abundance of titanium white here. With that, we can go in and start tapping where the trees are going to be. And a lot of our markings for these trees were vertical, whereas these will be more so horizontal. And this is far from the pigment that the trees will end up being, but we do need that darker base layer. And you know what, we could probably go even darker. Let's start a fresh mix so that we don't have to work too much within here. It's a bit more gray, not a bad thing. We'll leave slight openings especially towards the bottom, trying to build variance and texture. Here, a larger opening. We'll build this to be a bit higher than what we have there. And if your pigment has minor variation in it, um, that's also okay. It's actually a good thing. Getting a little tongue-tied there. Exciting news for anybody who's been following the channel. The brushes that I'm currently using are just about at the year anniversary for when I started working on them and testing them. And they're still fantastic. I always love that when the brushes actually have longevity. Not all brushes do. And I'm just working on these details thinking how nice it is that all of the bristles and everything haven't expanded and broken out to the point where it just doesn't work the same. So if you've purchased the brush set, know that you'll get a lot of good use out of it. And we'll just have this draping over here. We'll also include some 
in the distance, but not too many, and I'm trying to use the less bright portions that are on my brush. Yet again, we waited for things to dry, and now we're going back in with a permanent rose, also from Windsor and Newton. I'm going to use this to start crafting our initial highlights, but I don't want them to be too dramatic. So we're mixing about half and half with the purple, which we've previously worked with. We do want a hint of titanium white and a hint of Mars black. That said, we don't want it to be too, too bright, too, too saturated, a real middle ground of a pink. And we'll start applying this predominantly towards the tops of our applications, leaving openings so that initial base layer does show through as a inset portion. And we'll just start working it towards the back. We can also have it work down. We're not going to move this far down with all of our highlights, but it is only our first layer. So it's okay, provided we still have portion showing from the initial application. Going to get some extra water. On the topic of water, friendly reminder, do stay hydrated as you paint. I know that I'm one of those people who can completely forget to <laughs> eat or drink for hours on end. Just really fall in love with the process. So if you're also like me, do remember to keep painting a mentally and physically healthy hobby and just making sure you're getting that water in. Maybe a nice tea, hot chocolate this time of year. There we go. Now, yet again, we'll brighten it up. So, start with half and half, maybe a little bit more of our pink, slightly less of our titanium white, and slightly less of our Mars Black. We'll start by applying this towards the top. And I want these markings to be nice and sharp. So we need to make sure that our brush is damp and that it doesn't have an overabundance of paint because when it is too much paint, you don't have these sharp markings from the bristles. You essentially just have paint touching paint in an abundance. So we'll be careful with that. Grabbing more water. It does mean that we will thin our applications, but I strongly feel it's worth it. We can always go back and add more and we are doing a lot of layering anyway. So more is occurring. You can see that my brush has a bit of an angle to it. but that I'm rotating in the air occasionally. We don't rotate when we're actually on the canvas because then we just make a much larger, not sharp application. And then we'll work this down just a little bit. Now we don't want to get too detail focused. We need to look at it as a whole. So we are going to take that step back and we will build, I think maybe one more application of highlights this time, significantly more of our pink than our purple, still a little bit of titanium white. And I think we will avoid Mars black for the most part, maybe just the smallest hint. From there though, I'm not going to continue applying with this brush. Instead, we'll put that down and we'll switch over to our liner brush. Fantastic for very intentional mark making. Make sure that it's nice and damp. Grab some of that newly mixed pigment and 
we'll begin applying with taps, predominantly towards the top, really create some intentionally detailed portions. Grabbing more water. And this is one of those things where you don't want to be too, too close to the canvas because it's easy to get hyper-focused on the actual technique and the pattern and then make an area too detailed or just not blend in with the rest of the painting. So if you can stand a bit farther away, hold the brush a bit farther back, it's typically quite good. Now, I don't normally like to mix with this brush. We mixed with the filbert, then we switched over to the liner because it just doesn't have a lot of bristles. It doesn't have a lot of surface area, so it can't move a great amount of paint. But when we are working with an area this small, we can do some mixing here, and I'll just show you that. Now, I don't want to go with the brightest possible pinks because we do need to save those true highlights for our foreground. But I think this is a really good compromise. It's bright, but not too bright. It's saturated, but not too saturated. And the details really starting to show up. If you find it difficult and that it's becoming a little muddy, that you're not seeing the highlights or the sharp renderings in the way that you want to, typically that's just because the base layer is still wet and it's blending with your pre-existing pigment. So if that's the, the case, the scenario, just let it dry. Then you can come back to it and have much more favorable results. Just do a little bit more. Trying to make sure that these trees have variants, that some are taller than others, that we occasionally have interesting dips, separation, and that can be achieved greatly through highlight. There we go. Now we'll get a little closer and switch back to the larger flat-headed brush. For the first time, we'll grab burnt umber, move that to a clean spot on our palette, mix it with some of the pink that we used previously, a little bit of our Mars black, and a little bit of our titanium white. Now with this, we're going to cut across, creating a relatively sharp line, as you can see. Flat-headed brush is fantastic for these elongated, controlled markings. And then I'm just going to blend this up into that darker portion and let it dissipate into the back. So I'm relieving pressure as you move up and into that blend. There we go. Now it's very thin, so we need a second, potentially a third layer. I'll build that back up, slightly less water this time. And you can already see a dramatic difference. That said, 
as we've talked about before, if you're having a hard time getting the paint to adhere to the canvas, just let it dry and then come back to it. We can also render a darker variant, so significantly more Mars black. We can apply that in that darker negative space and blend it down. From there, we can actually continue working with a very similar palette and our liner brush, rendering a neutral to brighter brown. And with this, we can very softly place in the bottom of trees Now it doesn't stand out much, and we want them to be larger when they're closer to us. When they're farther away, they're smaller, we apply less pressure with the brush. Trying to apply them at different angles. Get unique markings. Just like that. Then we can go a little bit brighter. Extra titanium white. A little bit more of the pink. Then towards the bottom, we can add that highlight. Can't be towards the top because we essentially have all of the shadows that the trees are creating, right? We also don't want too many in the back because we don't want this area to stick out too much. So just little hints. Really expanding upon the branches towards the front. Trying to make them unique. Work them up into the rest. You can also create some darker branches using that same brush, quite a bit of water. And we can create little protruding pieces that make their way. And then we can use this as a darker backing pigment for the highlighted trees on the bottom, giving them some depth. We just have this kind of popping up in different areas in between open air portions of foliage. Don't want too, too many, but I think, I think that's nice. Now we may go back up and add some extra detail, but we're going to start on our reflection and we'll do so with a dark green. So we'll have our sap green, Mars black, about an equal amount, a little bit of our titanium white, not too large in abundance. We really want the darker hue that we used for the base. And I'm going to cut across our burnt umber application first because we have a damp brush and our best opportunity to render sharp markings. And then from there, we'll just expand outwards a little bit, start bringing that down. We'll make it a bit more green, a little bit more titanium white. Expand downwards. We'll do the same thing yet again. More green, more titanium white. 
and we're just going to give it that proper hue. This is a little bit darker than what we have up here, and intentionally so. Reflections are often a little bit darker than that which they reflect. So we'll just bring that down. And one more time, green, titanium white. And of course, because our brush is damp, we're able to continuously blend this into our past application without any issues. You may need to do two layers and make it nice and thick, but we do need to let it dry before we add in the reflections of the pink. Now we'll start working in some pink and purple, and we'll do that here with the actual purple, a little bit of our Mars black, just a hint. And we'll also grab some of the pink, do a little test, make sure it looks nice with the rest of our foliage. In fact, we can even add to the foliage if we want to. Create little intricacies we might have intended to do before. And these additions can be translated into the reflection. So I'm just spreading this color out so that it feels cohesive. And then we'll switch brushes for the first time to a smaller flat-headed brush. And this one has a really nice sharp edge, especially when wet. And it'll be great for getting a lot of horizontal markings in there. You can see that I'm taking my pinky finger, bracing it on the easel to eliminate shake from my hand. And I'm going to start by matching this new addition. Then we'll do this one. Then obviously they connect up here. We're doing horizontal strokes. It's a bit of an opening. We're not really mirroring it, but more so the idea of where those colors are. And you can see that this is quite gray in relation to what we actually have on the palette. That's just because we are applying over the darker hue, but as we go over it with multiple layers, we can build up that saturation. So we'll just go over it here, show you how much of a dramatic effect that can make. And then we'll continue This is something that's going to essentially run the majority of this edge. So I'll just put in the initial application. Then we'll start expanding, leaving little openings. The, the opening should get larger as we get closer to us. And I'm applying slightly more pressure with the brush as we do get closer to us. So the brush stroke expands, it becomes larger. Let's go back in. You can see that the second application is so much more vibrant and full. Still getting those nice sharp markings. This is just one of those processes that's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of layering. And 
Then we just build it up. So these are starting to come together. So we could definitely do more, but I don't want to overdo it before we've established the rest of this area and figure out just exactly how much detail we really want. So what we're going to do is we'll grab a hint of our ultramarine blue, find a clean spot on our palette, a lot of titanium white that isn't diluted by the green. Mix that up. A little bit of our Mars black again, grab from an area that isn't diluted. And what we essentially want is a slightly darker pigment than what we used in the sky. So we'll do a bit of a test. Looks quite good. And we'll apply this to our base of the canvas, horizontal strokes. Now we are using a brush with a nice sharp head. So what we can do is we can actually work it in to these previous markings interject that blue throughout and then we can do a bit of a build up here again getting those nice little transitions and as we get to there we switch over to more of the pink hue that we used for the sky. Just like so. Start blending that into the blue. Really small markings into this at this point because we're getting farther away. Applying less pressure with our brush but still starting to create that transition. Make sure that it's nice and thick. And I think intuitively we make this area that pigment, but if we look in the reference photo, we can see that it's actually more of a blue because of the angle in which we see the back of the water. You don't get a proper reflection, or at least a conventional one, a intuitive one. And it's a bit more of a, again, a, a blue, akin to what we have down here. So. I'll just work that in. Being fairly patient with it. You can see I'm taking off all this excess blue. Don't want too much. There we go. Good. This will also work right here. It'll be a similar pigment. Now, we still have a lot of work to do here, but we're going to want to do it with the smaller flat headed brush. So, right here, I think, admittedly, it looks a little messy, and that's okay. We're going to take some of the darker green that we previously had. And using this brush, we'll just start tapping some of these markings out here. We want to keep them very sharp. Like so. This is going to look a lot better if everything is done very cleanly. A little bit more of a Darker, Mars black, a little bit grayed out variant. These tiny markings are really what's going to make it work. 
But again, they get larger as we get closer to us. Now let's take some of the peachy blue. Mix up some of that. Should work just beside here. And we slowly work this in, going over a lot of our past markings. Making sure my brush is damp. You can see that I'm going over the same area time and time again very intentionally. We'll also create a bit of a darker bluish peach mix. So this time incorporating some Mars black, still with the titanium white. It's okay if it's a bit desaturated. And we'll start working that out here just to show movement and motion. This way the pattern doesn't just exist within this space. We can also use this to taper in some of the green if we feel like it's excessive. Or soften it. Now, as we get closer, we can enter a stage of refinement for the water. Here, I'm going to take some titanium white, mix that in, hint of Mars black. And I just want a brighter variant of what we have through here. Though I'm not going to paint it as a large block instead. We're going in with that same technique and we just continuously do this stroke, this pattern, this effect with slightly different pigments until we have subtle lines moving through the entirety of the water, smaller in the distance, larger in the foreground. We don't want a dramatic change between any of them in the distance, though we can up close. I'm just trying to brighten this a little bit. Again, it still needs to be darker than what we have in the sky. A lot of these we can't even see at this point just kind of getting lost in the shuffle. It's a sign we're doing things right though. Also move over to this spot and grab some of our pink, a little bit of titanium white, not much. I don't want to dilute the pigment greatly. Hint of our purple, hint of our Mars black. We don't want it to be too bright. Again, tiny lines. Initially not connecting to anything, but we can connect them should we feel it's appropriate.
Here's a lot of connection. We can try it. If we don't like it, we can walk it backwards. Won't be too hard. There we go. As my brush runs out of pigment, this softens. We don't get those hard markings. Instead, we get this almost dissipated glow. When I'm quiet, you can even hear it on the canvas. Just like that. So I am a fan. I like how that looks. I think Taking our time here, making sure we're doing it right. Let's go with a Mars black, titanium white, a little bit of that red, that pink. And we'll just use this to shape things a little bit more. Extend some of these markings outwards. Grab some water. Using it to separate longer applications that maybe feel a little too big, a little too long. I think it really starts to work as we bring it into the blue. Walk it off the side. We don't want to bring it out too, too far, but I think that's a good balance. Then really tiny towards the back there. We can even use this to clean up portions here, should we want to. And now we'll grab some of our purple, blue, more blue. That's really pretty. A little bit of titanium white. A little bit of Mars black. And we'll create some larger separations up here. And these are much more extended. A little bit of a transition from one into that darker pigment. That way it doesn't feel like they're just hard starting and stopping. There we go. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and redrawn in a lot of the branches and the general outline for our foliage in the foreground. We'll do our blocking in with the larger flat headed brush and I'm going to begin by grabbing some of that purple hint of Mars black. We want the base layer to be a bit darker, but we don't want too, too much. And we're also going to add a lot of our pink. It's really going to be a combination of the pink and the purple with the Mars black. I don't think we'll add any titanium white though, because the purple already has a lot of white in it, desaturates pigments to a good ordeal. And I think this will be a very solid base color. It's not too bright. It's not too saturated. We can build on it in both regards. 
You can see that I'm just using the corner of the brush to get the sharper markings in. But here we're not painting leaves, you're essentially painting clusters of petals, which is interesting. Leaving a couple openings. And we'll overlap with the green trees and the cherry trees that we have in the background. There we go. I'm just looking at the reference photo for this general positioning. However, again, if you're up over on Patreon, you can just download the traceable and redraw it on. Also, if you're new to the channel and this is your first video, not only can you get the traceable up over on Patreon, but you can also get a visual of all of the materials, all of the brushes, all of the paints that I'm using. My ebooks, including Acrylics for Beginners, which is essentially the essentials, everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. A bunch of ebooks full of traceables for days where you want to make something, but you're not really sure what that is. We also have an exclusive Facebook group that you can add access to. There, everybody shares their renditions of these pieces, helps each other out. It's a really, really positive community. Additionally, we're starting to do art reviews as well. And there's a bunch of fun stuff up there. So, if you're new, check it out. There will be a link in the video description. And to everybody who's already up there, of course, I'd like to say a big, big thank you for making this channel what it is. Really wouldn't be able to put the time into these lessons that I do if it wasn't for you. And it's a pleasure to be able to put these together. So thank you. Thank you greatly for these opportunities. Here I'm going to the ends of the to be painted branches and I'm just putting on my little clusters. We'll be painting the branches over portions of these. But not all of them. You can see that I'm slowly expanding it out. We don't do too many all at once. We do a couple, we see if we like it, we do a couple more, we see if we like it. I think I actually want to do a, maybe a slightly darker layer, but we needed to do two layers anyway. So it's actually quite convenient. Might use a little bit less of the purple than we did last time. Love that. It's worth noting that our previous application was a little bit brighter on the canvas than what it was on the palette anyway, just because we were painting over white canvas for the most part and it was semi-transparent. So we had that brightness showing through, where with this we have the neutral pinkish purple showing through. So it's already a little bit darker than what it was with the past application. And it definitely looks better through the second amount. Now what we'll do is we'll take that same larger flat-headed brush and we'll mix up a nice darker pigment with burnt umber, Mars black, and a little bit of titanium white. This will be for our branches in the foreground and we'll apply them with our liner brush which we previously used for detail in the trees here, but now we can sketch in all of the great detailed stark branches in the foreground. And with these, 
I think a lot of people like to make very smooth, continuous lines. I personally much prefer to make a lot of applications that are disconnected from each other. Even when there's a longer strand so that it looks a bit more natural. Typically if it has a lot of broken up movements, looks a little more jagged, it looks a bit more organic. So that's what we're working for right here. Really going in with a less is more approach initially. We'll paint a little bit and then maybe we'll go back and we'll paint more. Really easy to add, much harder to take away. That said, we can if we overdo it. Don't worry, acrylics are very forgiving medium and that's one of the wonderful things about them. We can just add this base layer on top or repaint portions of the sky on top. Speaking of on top, I am not only painting this in between these clusters of petals, but also over portions of them. Not all, but certainly finding areas to do so. That's just going to give us some extra depth. Having them weave in and out. There we go. We have quite a few in here. Make sure that they just break off, create additional strands. And they won't only be relegated to the top. We will have them throughout, crossing one another, breaking off. It'll be less significant towards the bottom because we don't want to draw the eye down here to too much of a degree, but we want it to still be cohesive and match the rest of the painting. There we go. Really like how this is turning out. So I ended up just extending these out a little bit, but from there, we are going to make a slightly darker variant of this. So more Mars black than we had before, more of our pink, and slightly less of our purple because the purple is essentially what we are using to brighten it. We still want the pink for the heavy saturation and we still want the Mars black to darken it. So we start with that, switch over to our liner brush, make sure it is nice and damp so we can get those sharp markings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go behind different clusters and start applying this darker hue. So if the light's coming, say, this way, then the right-hand side will receive that light, the left-hand side will not, it'll have the shadow. So we'll be able to create contrast and make it look three-dimensional by incorporating these darker hues on the left-hand side of a lot of these clusters both on the actual outskirts, but also on the inner portions to a degree. 
That said, I think I actually want it to be a little bit darker. I want more contrast. We are in the foreground where, as noted previously, we can build up the saturation, but also the contrast and the values because we're not going to have as much atmospheric reflective light working its way around subjects. This is really quite dark and I think maybe slightly more so than what I want. I'm just going to do a couple more applications so I can really decide. And you know what, actually I like it coming off of the branches. I think it has a really good place there. So it's not wrapping around the entirety of the back, but it's a good connector from the branch. And if we make it nice and wet, it'll be semi-transparent, it won't be as dark. I think this actually works well. We found the right setting for it, essentially. And I know you're quite far away while I'm painting detail, but this is one of those things where it's important where, that we see it from a distance. We keep mindful of it farther away because it's so detail oriented that we can easily get wrapped up in the details, not look at it in the larger context and then have all of these beautiful markings that don't really fit in, that don't really fit the right shape or the patterns that we need throughout. So we try to stay a bit farther back. You can see that we're working in here now. I'm starting by working my way off of branches, but then also throwing them randomly throughout, trying to create little patterns. But this is, again, essentially the backs of some, in addition to the inset areas that can't receive as much light. So it's serving multiple purposes. We can apply more as we get towards the left hand side because the majority of the light is hitting the right hand side and then it's working its way this way. We can create larger portions. And I'm definitely going to do that towards the bottom as well because I want to create a slight vignette effect. As the pigment dissipates, we get lighter variations, which also look really nice. Gives us some additional easy diversity. There we go. Now for the next step, we're back to the one inch flathead because we want to mix more paint. Now for this, I think we'll grab some of our pale rose blush, mix that up in a new spot on our palette, grab about an equal mixture of our permanent rose. I think that's a really nice pigment. Let's do a little bit more. There we go. That's beautiful. Put down a brush, grab the liner, and now we can start applying the areas that are receiving light and the edges of our petals. So as you can see, applying it predominantly on the right hand side, 
I have a fairly watery brush, which is making my pigment semi-transparent, meaning I can blend it back into our previous application should we want to. But I'm also trying to apply a fair amount of paint so that we get a nice thick rendering. Also, remember that this is typically a cluster of petals and not an individual one, and therefore there are lots of little spotted portions, not just the very edge. It'll be much more noticeable as we work our way in here, as it's more dense. Really love the first couple taps after grabbing the pigment just because it is so opaque and that natural hue is gorgeous. I know I'm working with somewhat odd pigments, pigments that aren't necessarily common. You can make these colors using cadmium red, maybe some titanium white, mixing in ultramarine blue to get your purples. So you don't need these, but they certainly do make it easier. And all of mine are again from Windsor and Newton. Yeah. Got these in a little collection pack. So the tubes of paint are quite small, but when you're working on a small canvas like this, you don't really use that much paint anyway. Great for trying different palettes and ideas. You could do so much detail if this was a large canvas, something like 24 by 36, you could paint each of the petals individually. Here, we are more so painting the idea, the impression of the petal, because we just don't have that much space. And that's not a bad thing. It's a really good skill to learn, actually, how to simplify subjects. You can see that I'm going back into quite a lot of these. Whenever I do large paintings, something again like a 24 by 36 inch piece, I do typically like to paint it on a smaller canvas first, get myself acquainted with the palette, the composition, if I want to make any dramatic changes before committing to that larger idea. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this mini painting series again. I used to do a lot of tiny ones with a 10 minute painting series. And I just felt like it was such a good habit that I wasn't really continuing to build. So here we are, back at the canvas. Quite a tiny one. But I note all of this because you can, if you'd like to, work on a much larger one. And you can do a small one first and then a larger one, or you can just jump into it. But just because I'm working on this size doesn't mean you have to. Though I do find working on tiny canvases to be very beneficial long term. Going over areas twice to build up those highlights. You can see the dramatic difference between here and here. You can do larger clusters where they're more so together. It's also worth noting that I'm not pressing the brush into the canvas with any real force. At least I'm trying not to. Because when we do that, we expand the bristles, we thin the paint. We lose detail, but we also make a more transparent application. And this is an application that I want to be quite thick. We're already fighting transparency because of the inclusion of the water. And I'm having to go back over areas numerous times to remedy that. So do try to have a very delicate touch with your brush as that will
make for stronger painting and an easier time for you. Here, lots of connective tissue, essentially. As the pigment runs out, I work my way farther to the left. Because it's less visually prominent. And we want it to be a little bit darker as we work towards the left because we have more shadows going this way, right? Might need to mix more paint soon. We'll see. You can tell your layers are thin. When when you grab new paint and you go to apply it, you immediately go back to a previous application and thicken it rather than applying it to a new area. Just intuitively. Now I'm running out of paint. So I'll go in with this little speckled dotted approach in the areas that are a little bit darker and just build that texture up and out. Really love how this is starting to shape up. I feel like a lot of people get A little demotivated when initially working with acrylics because often the paintings don't look great from the very beginning. It's kind of a medium where you have to build up all of these different layers and over time it becomes something that you love. But you kind of have to have that faith in yourself, that vision of what it could be to get there because you go through a lot of awkward stages and you have to be okay with that. This painting certainly did. And I think it's important to remember that I think it's important to remind ourselves and those we know about it because if you do stick it out you can end up with something that you really love right and I think for me often I don't end up really loving a painting or even many portions of it until that final 10 15 percent you know I can be 80 90 percent done and it's just it's not there it's not clicking for me and then all of a sudden it all clicks. So, maybe you're like me. Maybe it takes a little while for it to turn into what you really want it to. And that's okay. As long as you hold out, you take that time, you work on it, you give it a real, real try, put that effort in, and eventually, you get there. And you know what? I think we got there. That right there is the painting. I hope you loved it. I hope you had a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed this and I very much enjoyed our time together. So thank you for being here. I will see you soon with a brand new painting lesson. If you haven't subscribed, remember, you can get the traceable reference photo, all of the visuals of the materials that I used up over on Patreon, along with the ebooks, access to the Facebook group, a um, bunch of cool stuff up there, art critiques as well. So all of that, you can also get the brushes that I used linked in the description. It is from uh, our set. <laughs> They're uh, vegan, cruelty-free. I love that. Don't have to worry about the glue in them being um, taken from an unethical source. So yeah. Really though, thank you for being here. I look forward to spring. I look forward to spring with you and creating more paintings just like this. You have a wonderful day and above all, as always, stay creative.